Yo, what is up you guys and welcome to another video. My name is Benji and this is week number 40 of Invest on the Robinhood app. We did in fact make some pretty significant stock trades today as well as a few option plays. So let's get right into it. But first, let's take a look at the portfolio. We're the portfolio is currently down just around $250 of this moment. It has been sort of another choppy day in the market. At one point, we were up 0.27%. So it was looking like we're going to have maybe a green day. It is still pretty early in the trading day, though. So we will have to wait and see what happens. But currently, we're sitting at just around 225000 as of today. Over the last week, we are currently up 7700 at some change. We're up 3.55% over the last week. The last month, we're down 3800 and some change. We're down 1.66% over last month. And then over the last three months, we're up 9,200 and some change. We're up 4.3% over the last three months. Then over the last year or all time, we did start this portfolio just over 40 weeks ago. We are down 2.08%. We're down just over $4,700. So we are still climbing our way back up. We'll hopefully be to that neutral or green position soon. Not that it really matters because this is a very long-term portfolio. So whatever this number really is at doesn't mean all that much because we are just looking to get paid out dividends, buy more equities, reinvest all the money that we're making back into the portfolio over the long term. So it doesn't matter all that much, but it is nice, of course, to see the numbers in the green overall. Now, we did go ahead and make a few new stock purchases today, which are becoming harder and harder to find deals in the market because the entire market is, of course, going up over time, which sort of works out for my portfolio because I am getting lower and lower on my overall cash balance as time goes on. So it's kind of nice that I have been buying stocks over the last few months because the prices now are getting kind of high in a lot of these stocks, although there still are some good deals in the market. So there was a great deal today in the market. Microsoft, Apple, a lot of the tech stocks were rotating downwards. So I did grab one share of Microsoft at 203.04, which is, in fact, below my average cost which is absolutely awesome we were talking about yesterday how i really do not like buying stocks above my average cost just as more of an ocd mental thing it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad way to do it or a bad way to invest but it's just something that i don't really like to do i did go ahead and grab one more share of microsoft though just to add to my position overall what's honestly sort of convenient is that when all the other stocks that i normally buy are kind of up in price today microsoft apple a few other stocks that i have been really trying to add more to my position in as of recently are kind of down so that was actually pretty convenient so Pretty awesome that I grab a share of Microsoft at a low price of around $200. I think it's a steal at this price. Then I grabbed one more share of Coke. It was down a little bit underneath my average price. I grabbed one more share at $46.38 per share. Then the next play that we made, we sold a covered call on Verizon. I currently have 546 shares of Verizon in my portfolio at an average cost of $55.26. Verizon hasn't ripped up as of recently. We are in the positive by quite a bit now, which is pretty cool. We have over $30,000 worth of Verizon in this portfolio, which is cool because Verizon is a dividend-paying stock, of course, and it does pay a nice dividend, as well as it has an overall good business model, and I just like Verizon overall. But to earn some extra money off the shares that I own, I did sell a covered call for five contracts, so that equals 500 stocks. So even if this contract was exercised, and of course I was forced to sell uh, the five contracts, 500 shares of Verizon. I would still have 46 shares left over, which isn't all that bad. The expiration date I went with was next Friday, so 724, so we have some time on this one. The strike price was $60, which I really do not believe Verizon is going to hit $60 by next Friday. I mean, you guys tell me if I'm wrong, but Verizon doesn't move all that much in price, and that would be quite a jump uh, by next Friday. And we were able to earn $3 per contract, so we were able to earn $15 a premium for this one. And this is, again, it's just a good way to make more money off the shares that you have in your portfolio, a really safe and sort of risk-free way, because the worst case scenario is we are going to have to sell out 500 shares of our Verizon at six dollars per share which would be absolutely awesome because that's like a huge huge profit considering we are holding verizon at 55 26 per share so we would be making over four dollars profit per share of verizon at 500 shares of verizon that'd be i mean a huge huge profit as well as earn the premium or on the other side we would just have to earn the premium and nothing would happen and we can do it all over again so that is the beauty of selling covered calls it's awesome if you guys have over 100 shares or anything in your portfolio definitely look into it i have videos uh, that i made before explaining this whole thing in detail so if you guys are a little bit confused just go to my channel i have an entire options playlist and take a look at what i'm talking about and the next options trade that we made today we sold the covered call with chevron at a 96 dollar 50 strike price that also expires next friday 7:24. The thought process behind this trade is I currently own 130 shares of Chevron. So again, this is just for one contract. So if this were to, of course, exercise, I would still own 30 shares of Chevron, which is not a small position by any means, really. I mean, Chevron's a pretty expensive stock. The idea behind getting rid of Chevron, if, of course, it does hit the strike price by next Friday, which I don't think that it's going to, 96.50 is pretty far away from where Chevron is right now. And Chevron and oil stocks in general have not been really trading that high as of recently. So it would be pretty shocking if it does jump up that much by next Friday. So I'm considering this one pretty much as premium profits. But if it were to exercise and I were to get rid of 100 shares of Chevron, I wouldn't be all that mad because I do currently have a lot of oil stocks in my overall portfolio, which I am trying to get rid of. Nothing against oil stocks. It's just that I have a little bit too many. I have a lot of ExxonMobil. I have a lot of Chevron. I have a lot of Pembina Pipeline. 
I have a few other smaller positions in other stocks too. So I do have a lot of oil stocks in my portfolio. They don't really move that much. There's a lot of uncertainty with them for the long term. And I just feel like my money's better used in other stocks, honestly, uh, such as like really high quality REITs or maybe some tech stocks, honestly. So I wouldn't be that mad if I did get rid of these 100 shares of Chevron because again, I still would have 30 shares left. And I was able to earn $15 worth of premium for doing this option trade, which does again expire next Friday. So that was my thought process behind that. Let me know what you guys think. Then next, we bought one more share of Realty Income, just again, dollar cost averaging. Realty Income has been going up in price as of recently a little bit. The entire REIT sector has been going up a little bit over the last few days. So I am just trying to grab as much Realty Income as I can before the price does go up because I'm pretty bullish on Realty Income long term. I think it'll be a $65, $70 stock uh, over the next year or two for sure. Then next, you guys, we sold another put on the SPY ETF. So we did enter the next chapter in the SPY wheel. We are three for three so far. So this would be four for four. This one does expire on 717 to this Friday. We did go with a $310 strike price, which is pretty far away. Again, we're at 319 and some change. Uh, I like to keep it pretty far away because I'm not necessarily trying to be greedy. I don't want, I don't need to earn that much free premium. Honestly, I'm very happy with earning $23 for letting them hold on to my money, you know, for a few days. It's not that bad at all. And of course, with this $23, every single time we do run the spy wheel, we are always going to be buying half Microsoft and half Apple with the premium. So we're really trying to build up our positions with Apple and premium, mostly built off of all the premium that we're making from doing this. So we are three for three, like we said. A lot of you guys are guessing down below what week we finally will be exercised when I will have to buy the 100 shares of the SPY ETF. But so far, so good. The market has been going up pretty good over the last hours. We already are gaining value in this trade. So, but we will see what happens, you guys. Could the SPY ETF hit 311 or 310 or 309 dollars by tomorrow? It's very, very possible. The SPY ETF moves around a lot throughout the day and throughout the next few days. So we have until Friday at the close to see what happens, but I'm really hoping we can be four for four and so far so good with this whole experiment. I also just want to show you guys my tracker so far. So this is the first time I ran the spy wheel. So, so far we've only been selling puts, of course, because we have to sell puts until we are assigned the 100 shares of the spy ETF. And then of course we'll go on the other side and we will sell covered calls and earn premium. But so far we have already earned over $100 with the premium for doing this. And again, you guys, I am picking really far away strike prices. So we could be earning a lot more premium, which we might do in the next few weeks. We'll see here. Let me know what you guys think. But so far, we have been running this very conservatively. And of course, I want to give you guys and show you a lot of monthly calculations once we have more data, like how much are we making off of this entire spy wheel per month as far as a return goes on our money, etc. Because again, we're using $30,000, $31,000 worth of uh, collateral. So it's not a small amount of money. But to be earning hundreds of dollars, you know, a week or every few weeks is a lot more money than you're going to earn in a lot of other situations off of $30,000. So it's going good so far. We're running it pretty conservatively. I might go a little bit more aggressive soon here. That would be actually kind of fun to see. So again, let me know what you guys think and let me know when you guys think we will be getting our first assigned shares of the SPY ETF. And then as far as purchases today, we did go ahead and buy $11.50 worth of Microsoft and $11.50 worth of Apple, again, from the $23 that we earned from the SPY ETF premium. So we are going to be doing that every single time we earn premium. Like I said, I'm really excited to see, you know, a year from now, how much of a position we can build up for the most part, just from spending money from all the premium that we get. As far as new dividends on the portfolio, there are a few new ones. I just want to scroll through real quick here and show you guys. Some of you guys like to keep up to date with what dividends are paying out of my portfolio, etc. So the Robin and Desktop has like some of the dates of the dividends mixed up. Um, let me know if that ever happens to you guys. On my computer, the Robin Hood Desktop is sometimes kind of glitchy, but I don't really know why it's doing that. But anyways, here's the newer dividends that we have in the portfolio. These are all pending, as well as we did have a few payout today. I think just today alone, we had maybe over like $50 for the dividends payout in the portfolio. So yeah, I mean, we had a realty income, almost 60 bucks. Then we had a few other ones that were paid out $27 from Arbor Realty Trust. And we had another one from Stag, which is absolutely awesome. So we are getting a nice amount of cash balance to work with now to reinvest into a bunch more high quality dividend stocks. So the portfolio is looking pretty good and happy where things are going. And I'm just hoping that we can keep things moving in the right direction. Next, you guys, real quick, I want to update you guys on my M1 Finance portfolio. This is my smaller growth portfolio that's made up of tech stocks. It's currently sitting at just $1,055 and some change. We're up $80 and some change. We're up almost 14% overall, and we still have $35 worth of cash balance, which is pretty cool. So we started this portfolio just around a week, week and a half ago, and we're just investing into a different kind of tech stocks that you guys are helping me pick for the most part. We have Tesla, Spotify, Microsoft, Facebook, and so on and so forth. We have around 10, 11, 12 stocks so far in the portfolio, and we will be adding maybe a few more, but for the most part, it's pretty much set up. We want to just keep adding more money to our favorite companies in this portfolio over time. 
and to see how big we can grow it over time. So the few newest additions to the portfolio was Adobe and Pinterest, which aren't doing so hot as of today, which is perfectly fine. But the newest purchase today was Tesla. I bought $35 more Tesla, which will be deposited tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. during the next trading window. So the reason I'm buying more Tesla is simply because I believe in Tesla long term. And I think that having a portfolio that's made up of mostly Tesla will probably most likely not do me wrong. So that's why I'm buying more Tesla. And I'll continue to buy more until our position hopefully keeps growing over time. But here's the portfolio. So far, so good. I'll keep you guys up to date with what I get next in the portfolio. Next, you guys, we do have one free stock to open today. I know it's been a while. I do miss opening these as much as you guys do. If you guys don't already have an account on the Robin brokerage and you guys do want to sign up for it, use the link in my description to sign up for it. And if you do sign up with my link, you'll receive a free stock and so will I. And whenever I receive a free stock, I always open them up on these videos. So it's, so it's always kind of cool to see what I get. Also, you guys, this Robin account is pretty much up as far as a $500 per year total. So I want to choose a few of you guys pretty soon here, maybe this Friday or next Friday. And I want to drop a few of your guys' links in my descriptions of my videos so that when people come across my videos, they can click on the link. And if they use your link, you, of course, will receive a free stock just to get back to you guys and a little fun way to interact with you guys. But the free stock today is from Trinity L. So thank you so much, Trinity. Let's see what we got on this one. All right. And we got a share of VBI vaccines valued at $4.73. And before I go today, you guys, let's go over some viewer questions and comments. If you guys ever have any questions or comments for me, leave them down below. Keep about investing, business, real estate, anything at all, leave something down below. I'll always answer a few of them at the end of my videos. So the first one today is from Brian. T and O are my favorite stocks. If you get to sign the O contract, that just means that you get $23.35 per month in dividends. Win-win. So Brian, I love this comment and that's exactly how I think of things. We've went over a few days ago, I think, about my overall strategy with investing and how I really like to put myself into win-win situations. Like I've said before, even with my options trading, I really like to trade options in a way, in a method that if something happens, it's good. And if something happens on the other side, it's not necessarily bad or it's also good type of a thing. I really don't like putting myself in situations where it's all or nothing just because I'm really kind of afraid of risk. So I really love the way that you're thinking about that, Brian. If I do get a sign, that's a lot more money into my portfolio every single month from the great monthly dividend payer and realty income. The next one is from Samar. KO and T are def going to be my dividend staples for as long as they maintain their dividends. I want to highlight this one because you guys know how much I really like buying Coca-Cola and AT&T and how they really are staples in my portfolio and how I feel like they really are just great stocks. They've been paying dividends for so long. They've been raising their dividend for so long. Their overall business models aren't going anywhere anytime soon, in my opinion, and I'll just keep buying them pretty much every day, every other day, whenever I have any cash balance available. The next one is from Jimmy. Thanks, Benji. You're constantly inspiring all of us. Saving up a little bit more, start running the wheel. Any, any stocks you suggest running the wheel on that are a bit cheaper? So Jimmy, I appreciate that and thank you so much for watching my videos. And as far as stocks are a little bit cheaper, um, it's hard to say. I would really go through and look at your portfolio and if you have any dividend paying stocks in your portfolio um, that are a little bit cheaper that you believe in long term. I don't know about any cheaper stocks specifically that would be really good to run the wheel. But what I will tell you is, of course, do it with a stock that you have followed for a while that you know how it moves for the most part and that you can kind of gauge as far as that goes, as well as a stock that you feel like will, of course, not lose all its value. Because, of course, if you are assigned 100 shares of that stock, you don't want to be stuck with it and then it losing value like crazy. You want to be with a stock that's overall kind of bouncy back and forth consistently over time. There also is, of course, a lot of other ETFs that are a lot cheaper than $300 per share like the spy there's a lot of other etfs that are like around 40 dollars per share and there's tons of them out there so let's do some research but again do not get stuck with something that you wouldn't want to hold on to for the long term worst case scenario if i have to hold on to the 100 shares of the spy long term i mean that's like the entire market so if the spy you know goes down forever long term then pretty much the entire stock market is going to go down for the long term so um, that's why I think we're in the spy wheel is relatively safe and, you know, and in the long term, not that risky, honestly, but just pick a stock that you're comfortable with. Try to do some research on a stock or ETF and good luck with what you find. And the last one today, you guys, is from Skylar. Really like how you address the dollar cost average versus buying the best positions and cutting your losses. Def pros and cons to both. I want to highlight this one because it was so cool when I was asking you guys for your advice as far as my dilemma with the Foot Locker stock, for example. And you guys were in the comments giving me such great sides, kind of on both sides. A lot of you guys were saying, you know, you kind of agree with me. And a lot of you guys were saying, no, you know, cut your losses and move on to the next thing. And it's, and it's just so cool to be a part of a community with all you guys. So many of you guys are so, so smart and you guys are giving such great insight in the comments and in the Discord all the time. So thank you for that. But, but I also just wanted to address and point out that with investing, with finance, there are so many different vehicles to get you to where you want to go. And that's what's so fun about this. There's not just one path. I feel like that would be so boring. But honestly, it's so much fun to be a part of a community like this. I've learned so much. And thank you guys so much for all your insight. But that is going to do it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much as always for stopping by. Please, please drop a like on this video if you guys did like this video. Let's try to go for 300 plus likes on this video, you guys. So definitely, definitely slap that like button.
Also, make sure to leave a comment or question down below and I'll answer a few more of them in tomorrow's video. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys are subscribed to follow along with the journey. We have a lot going on here. You guys are not going to want to miss a daily video. As well as, of course, if you guys subscribe, like my videos, and comment often, you guys will, of course, be entered in every cash giveaway that is on Fridays. Tomorrow is Friday, so definitely do not miss tomorrow's video because we will be announcing the next cash giveaway. Good luck to all you guys. And finally, you guys, if you haven't already, make sure to join the Discord. The link is down below in my description. It is absolutely free to join. There's tons and tons of people in here that are super smart. We're all giving plays, trades, showing our progress of our portfolios, our businesses, all kinds of things. So if you guys haven't already, make sure to join the Discord, and we'll see you in there. Again, thank you guys so much as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.